Today we've got a Trek Speed Concept SL7. This is a pretty new bike. With TT bikes in general though, I want to check headsets uh, really closely and kind of feel and make sure any of that internal cable routing is not getting caught on anything. This one feels really smooth, but a lot of times they'll have smaller bearings in here to kind of account for the aerodynamic aspect of the bike. So those can go bad pretty quickly. Uh, I'm also gonna check, make sure there's no damage to our rims or tires. This is in really, really good condition though. We're gonna do the same here on the back side of the bike and inspect behind the crank just to make sure there's no damage that we're missing. There's a little bit of scuffing here. On. This one is uh, really new though, and you can see that there's really clean lines on this bike. Almost everything's internal. It does have the newer 12 speed Shimano DI2, which uses some cables. Actually, in this instance, I believe the TT bikes run fully internal. Um, we're going to have to look into that a little bit more because there's no wear on this drivetrain, but it's not operating fully. So specifically in regards to the shifting issues, um, these two lower brake mounted shifters are operating the front derailleur, um, and that's operating. I don't want to do it too much, it's kind of putting some stress on the chain. But these upper shifters, meant for more nuanced shifting in the rear, are not functioning at all. So this is telling me that these are, these are talking to the system. Uh, the battery is functioning. These are either not talking to the system or the rear derailleur is not talking to the system. And typically, a lot of times, this whole system will not work um, when one part is not functioning. So we're going to have to do a little digging to figure that out. Um, that's the biggest part problem I'm seeing on this bike. But aside from that, this bike's really clean. We'll note some of the scuffing that we saw just as cosmetic wear. But yeah, this is going to be a fun one for Carl to dig into and see if he can't figure out what's causing it not to work. Looks like these base bar shifters are operating the front derailleur just fine, but when I work on the aero extensions, these are, aren't doing anything. And when I shift the bike, I can get it up and down, but nothing's happening with the rear derailleur. And I always like to check the modes on these TT bikes, because um, with the one button operation, um, Sometimes they might just not be in the full synchro shift mode, which they need to be to work correctly. And so I can check that to make sure I'm in mode three, which is gonna be the full synchro mode. And I do that, and it still only operates the front derailleur. Nothing happens with the rear derailleur. Um, the rear derailleur doesn't even compensate. So at this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheels off to give myself some more room to work with and start tearing into the bike. One of the tricky bits with uh, some of these newer, a lot of newer bikes and especially time trial bikes since they're designed to be as aero and slippery through the air as possible, is there are a lot of covers and doors. So right now, I cannot see at all what's going on, why this might not be working. Um, one of the special tricks with this bike is I do notice it is a new 12 speed system, which is usually wireless from the cockpit communicating with the rear derailleur. And then the rear derailleur and the front derailleur are both connected to the battery. Um, but in this case, being a TT bike, um, I can see that we are gonna have a few wires around here, um, just due to the nature of the controllers available. And um, at this point, I also just know from experience that these are some of the older 11-speed generation components up here, so I should expect at least a couple wires. So I've gotta bring the bike up and uncover a few things. Let's see what I can find out here. which uncovers what I suspected, which is that these are older 11-speed components with the 11-speed wires. Um, what's strange here, though, is I only have two cables coming in and one going out. Um, I should have four, since I have four components up here. 
and then I would expect at some point down the line inside the bike to have an adapter that um, adapts these older wires to work with the uh, new 12 speed stuff. Just gonna bring the bike back up and just start removing all the other covers that I can find. So my next step is gonna be to try to remove this headset top cap. Just make sure these bolts are snug so that, that doesn't fall out on me. Okay, well that didn't really reveal too much. So we are gonna want to pull this off after all. Use a few tools at hand here just so that the fork doesn't completely fall out on me. I just like to roll a stool up underneath and use that to support the fork. Right now we're still very much in the investigative and diagnostic stage. So I still can't actually figure out where the wires are from my arrow extensions. And unfortunately, I think that means that we have to start disassembling this arrow extension system to figure out where they go. Everything is super well hidden on this bike. Um, makes it look really nice and really clean, but it definitely means more than a little bit of a headache trying to service it. Lots of covers and doors to keep everything looking clean and pretty. <laughs> And you can see, so this is one of the problems. You have to be really careful when you're assembling these things is as I uncover this, I can also see this cable is smushed and might actually be completely broken. Uh, we won't really know until I try to connect it and get it operating. So there we go. <laughs> I found the end of it. Um, nowhere close to where it needs to be. <laughs> and I suspect the same issue here. So fortunately, this should actually be a slightly easier process now. Now that I've got the end of my tool back out where I need it to be, snap my cable into there and pull it back on through. There's just so many edges and angles. So I think I actually got this close to where I wanted it to go. 20 minutes later, <laughs> we have one side done. <laughs> I have the cable out. Um, go ahead and test this before I waste a bunch of time. Well, we are in business. We got it plugged in and it operates the rear derailleur and it goes in the right direction. So now I get to do this all over again for the other side. Um, since I do actually, since this is, I noticed it was smashed and I have this accessible, I can go ahead and check. And it looks like it didn't get too smushed since the derailleur goes both directions. Even though that wire is a little smushed, it didn't actually get cut. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with getting it routed through this side of the handlebar. The good thing for the customer is that unlike us having to deal with all the various shipping challenges, we actually do have a special extra large box for bikes like this. Um, so whoever buys this will be receiving the bike um, with this cockpit fully assembled exactly as you see it. And because of that pinch hazard, every step of the way here, I always like to make sure that 
everything is still functioning correctly. that we're all good to go this bike is fully functional ready for the line <laughs>